longtime head coach John Herdman is leaving for greener pastures? Well, anyways, after a lot of CSA drama and CSB drama and player strikes and gold cups and world cups and conca caffrey and blue hats and a whole year where he seemed uncharacteristically checked out in every interview, there's a vacancy at the head of the team. Now, arguably, you might say it's the gentlemanly time to step aside. Herman got a whole qualifying cycle, two gold cups, two nations leagues, and a first world cup in 36 years. Didn't get any shiny trophies out of it, no. I think the general consensus right now is that he did a pretty good job, even if some of the rose-colored tint from the beginning is worn off. The departure has been in the news for, um, like, weeks now. Been a lot of names floating around as potential replacements long before the thing went and actually happened. Thought it'd be a great time to grade every name I think is remotely realistic and at the same time scoff at some of the higher profile ones that I think are certainly not realistic. <coughs> Our now interim coach and still the safe choice that would piss most people off. Um, Yellow's been with the program since 2018. They actually brought Morrow in one month after Herdman, sort of as a, a steadying hand to um, the man with no experience coaching men's soccer. For that, he coached with the Montreal Impact for two seasons, where, contrary to popular belief, he actually did have a winning record and a positive goal differential. Now, that tenure famously did not end so well, and his record with our youth teams has been middling at best. I won't pretend our U20s and U23s were bursting with the talent to justify the hate that Yellow's gotten in the fan base. I think it's pretty disproportionate. But in hindsight, that U23 team produced only one CMNT mainstay. Uh, the problem with Biello is that every chance he's got with the national program, his tactics have been really one note, at times hard to decipher. Uh, being ousted by Guatemala at the recent U20s does not help his case. Despite his familiarity with the program, whatever connections he might have with Montreal and that one game of experience he got uh, at Curacao away, I think this would be a pretty underwhelming pick and I think most of the fan base agrees. Bobby, perpetually connected to big moves he never gets, the head coach of Forge and CPL, winner of three North Star Shields, CONCACAF League semi-finalist and the founder of Mississauga's Sigma FC Academy, which has produced a lot of CMNT mainstays, um, the likes of Kyle Lahren, Tejon Buchanan, and Richie Larea. Um, well, you have to grant to Smiri Otis, he seems to have a proven ability to get the best out of his players. One might argue he's consistently had the best players in CPL at his disposal, um, but at least for four seasons, those players have consistently um, met or exceeded expectations. He's perhaps the biggest contributor to our national team unaffiliated with an MLS team. Still, it's hard to imagine a CPL coach getting this job to me. Um, it seems strange that Bobby has been so consistently linked to this MLS jobs and that he's sort of been passed over every time. Um, a lot of his competitors on this list have also had success at similar levels, but Bobby hasn't had to face the scrutiny of those levels at this point in time. Um, it's also important to note that Forge are not having the same season this year. They are not having a particularly good season. Um, I think it's awfully optimistic to think that someone could walk right into the national team from this level, having never managed international football, having never managed players of this caliber. This is more of a horror, horror story that we tell ourselves and someone who should actually be in contention. Um, the only thing he has going for him is the Herdman precedent. The problem there is uh, Neville's record with the England woman team is not good. Uh, and then he was an even bigger disaster in Miami. Um, he just seems like he's in a downward spiral and there's no real reason why I would want Canada to be next in line. This is probably the, the worst pick on the list, and I, I don't think it's happening. <coughs> to 
Thomas Christensen, um, CONCACAF Twitter's new favorite toy, head coach of Panama currently. Um, to his credit, he's helped them punch consistently above their weight. Um, victories against Canada and the U.S. in World Cup qualifying. Then the U.S. again at the recent Gold Cup in the semifinals. I think um, people in our fan base also tend to underestimate how many countries the Panamanian players um, play in at the club level. He has good experience managing guys at, at very different levels. Some in Europe and some just sort of scattered across South America. Um, what he doesn't have going for him is the type of football he has to play with Panama. He has experience grinding out results with a team that lacks a scoring punch. He doesn't particularly meet Canada's attacking profile. He also really only wound up with Panama because he had really middling results at club level, both in England and Belgium. Um, then there's perhaps the biggest question of whether he would want anything to do with Canada after the whole Vancouver fiasco with the player strike. Um, I might favor this as the best option on the list, but um, it's by no means a perfect option. Uh, Eric is reportedly following Herdman to TFC. I wouldn't say that guarantees he's out of the running. He's a long-time CMNT assistant coach and clearly someone uh, Herdman's favorite during his tenure. He's often seen behind the scenes in training on cut videos, um, frequently the one talking tactics and working with players with highlight footage. Uh, very performance oriented and he has a sort of similar profile to Herdman which is almost why I suspect he's um, been such a pillar in the coaching staff. He was a university lecturer and a coach without professional experience. To get to this position in life, like on your merit alone, um, it's probably something you're doing right. Of course, that also means no head coaching experience, certainly, uh, nothing close to this level, and thrusting Herdman's understudy into the head coach position when there are reports that um, Herdman sort of lost the room kind of seems counterintuitive. Um, overall, though, in like in like the the wonderkin factor and um just in general seeming like a, a bright guy whenever i've heard him in interviews um i would have eric up there personally uh hugo is just kind of mini christensen in a lot of ways he hasn't had much to work with obviously with el salvador um i also still think there's a lot of evidence he's this 40 chess master people treat him as. El Salvador haven't won a game right now in more than a year, and every negative of that applies to Christensen, applies equally or more to him. Um, he has experience coaching, like even more grindy football with El, Sal El Salvador than what Panama play, and this is the highest level he's coached at. I much prefer Hugo as, uh, like, perpetually the US's plan B than, um, than coming to the helm for us. I don't think there's the evidence he's, he's that level of coach. So Mark is currently the assistant coach, an assistant coach with LAFC and formerly the head coach with the Vancouver Whitecaps. Um, before we get into the stumbling mess that was MDS's Vancouver, should acknowledge what success he had. This is where the Bobby thing comes into play. Guys like MDS have had success at similar levels. He led an expansion team to a USL Cup final and then won a championship with the San Francisco Deltas in the NASL's last year of existence. That's sometimes what happens when you bring a guy to a new level. Um, your go-to, your stick doesn't work like it used to and you look completely lost. It's kind of disheartening that you can have success at lower levels, kind of like Bobby, but now that we have evidence against you at a, at a higher level in MLS, um, he's kind of blacklisted. For that reason, I'm giving him the same ranking as, as someone out um, as, as Bobby. And that's the note um, I'd like to leave this list on. Really aren't any slam dunk picks here. We're at a point where our, our head coach, our World Cup coach, can be poached by a bottom table MLS team. That puts us in this position where we're basically either taking someone who mucked up their first chance 
or we're really confident we found someone that no one else noticed. Won't pretend it's definitely going to be someone on this list. I think there's a really good chance it won't be. Pessimistic as we are about the CSA, um, you can imagine like a decent manager, someone we're not even considering seeing the prospect of a 2026 World Cup on our turf, seeing a spring of young talent that is very much still there, seeing a quite likely berth into next year's Copa America and throwing their hat into the ring. It's an uncertain time for the CMNT. Golden generation is young, but it still hasn't won. Whoever takes Herman's place is going to have to make a lot of compromises. A fledgling budget, a hodgepodge of players at a hodgepodge of levels with a unique set of demands and an increasingly cynical fan base that seems to be disappointed no matter what.